Hello, Republic of Gamers, and welcome to ROG Pulse, the podcast where we talk about all things. Oh, you guys are giggling. All things exciting here. And of course, uh, it's a good time. yeah, it is a good time. And we've got a great, a great thing to show off tonight because we just had CES, which means tons of new toys, tons of new products coming out. And I think this is the one that everybody's most excited about, I think, internally and from what I've seen online as well because it's something very different. It's the X13 Flow, a 13 inch laptop. We'll get to that soon. My name is Solid Jake or Jake Kalinski, and I'm joined here by Sasha and Ryan. Sasha, what's new? Um, getting better, recovering from CS, which was uh, a ton of work for us, uh, putting that all together over the last uh, couple of weeks. So yeah, uh, for us, finally having this everything, you know, all the products announced and released, things are starting to get back to normal slowly. We still got the reviews coming up, um, but yeah, uh, it's getting better now. Getting more sleep. A bit of normality. <laughs> Ryan, you, you've joined us once before on Pulse, long time ago, on like the first or second episode. How you been? Yeah, actually, I think it was two times. So okay. yeah, it's been that long. It's been a yeah, while. It's yeah. been that long. Yeah, the graphics yeah. card and Liquid Metal, right? I think? It was uh, It was definitely Liquid Metal. And I think oh, it was graphics the very card first was Jerome. One. Yeah. The very first episode. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Back when you guys Anyways, were in like it, the, it was, the weird was... scene, asylum with like the, the paneling on the walls. Yes, yes scooping was, up the liquid metal from the table. That was the that was our prison asylum that we keep. Is that still oh. is that still in the building? That room? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's we, we... it's right over there actually through mm. that wall or this wall. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's our lab, so we yeah. still keep it to to test laptops. Yeah. Um, okay. To get them ready and to yeah. to find and fix but, bugs. But yeah, like Sasha said, we you know been really busy with CES preparations. So a lot of the materials that I need to prepare for products like you know our duo the tough dash and uh you know the x13 as well so yep ryan is doing the review guides for those and uh so he's our mm. expert on the x13 and the duo um yeah oh come on I, I think <laughs> you are. Yeah. no 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 i'm just trying to be humble you know yeah. <laughs> well guys we we are talking about the the x13 flow and um let's just kind of give an overview as to what this device is it is a, a smaller form factor being 13 inches what else can you guys tell me about the X13. Yeah, so the ROG Flow X13, uh, honestly, it's our first, really our first ultra portable two-in-one uh, gaming laptop that, oh, let's see if we can. <laughs> you guys are trying what? to figure oh, out which way to delay. push or pull. Uh, yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go, there, there you go. Some, there's some gymnastics <laughs> we're doing here. Uh, so yeah, this one you can see it flips all the way back and you can convert it into you know whatever type of mode you want. So right now you got the traditional clamshell laptop laptop mode right here you can flip it all the way back and you can kind of do like a tent mode and this would be beneficial that we can explain later you know in terms of cooling that our you know thermo RG yep, team yep. loves to point out and it, this is honestly great for having increased you know thermal performance or you could just you know push it all the way to the back bam now you got a tablet and you can use a stylus with this you can use your hand you can just sit in bed you can you know use it like a normal tablet binge watch Binge now Netflix, to, to yeah. clarify yeah. Video this, calls. this is not like a surface the keyboard does not detach right yes that okay. is correct yeah but one thing that we do you know want to keep in mind is the keyboard does deactivate so you know oh that is good if you have it on your lap it's not going to be you know that was my first that was my next thing. question yeah because yeah. uh yeah so it is effectively There's a, a tablet when it's in that mode very cool correct or you could keep it as, as this mode as well. Um, this is good for, you know, if you want to show it off to someone, I guess. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a multitude of scenarios that you can use this, and that's essentially what how I would describe the X13. It's a very versatile. It's, pro it's the most versatile yeah. device that we have. It's an ultra portable that you can use on the go. You can bring it to, you know, work, to the cafe. And at home, you could have your eGPU dock that we will talk about in a bit. Or even if you don't want to leave it at home, you could bring that dock with you on the go just because of how light it is. So this laptop, you know, with the 5980 HS uh, CPU and then with our, you know, NVIDIA graphics. Uh, are we? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah we can, right? Okay, yeah, 1650, so, yeah. So yeah. yeah, this is with the 1650 and- uh, That's the onboard yeah, graphics, CPU. yeah. Yeah, so. yeah we're, we're all a little paranoid. Like we have like PTSD from what can we say and what can we not well, say for the yes, last yeah, few weeks. It was of, like, yeah, it around. has- a, no, we cannot say it. And even <laughs> when it's already announced by other people, we still couldn't say it. So it has, has been a little bit, uh, yeah. yeah, we're it's, still a little bit. <laughs> I have trauma. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so you know, next gen AMD CPU, next gen NVIDIA GPU. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, right, right. So yeah, high efficiency, you know, 35 watt, 5980 HS or 5900 HS. Uh, those are the two options for Super CPU. slim. And super slim. So this is, I believe, is 15.5 millimeters. 15.85, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. 15.85, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I mean, this is really light. I, so like, I know you... we can. Yeah, put it sideways uh, with the G14 because that's the G14 right, next so, to it. So we didn't explain that the other laptop here, that's the G14. And uh, we just put that here as a oh, size comparison. It, there's a delay. So <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, as, as a size reference. Move the G14 so closer maybe, to the X13. Or maybe we can put the X13 on top so okay. they can see that's like, good. the size yeah. difference. Yeah. Now show the depth, how, so, how thick it is as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <sighs> like that, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good. Uh, uh, yeah, you need to like find the right angle because <laughs> yeah, the like, camera is not it. straight. Yeah, and then with the delay, it's <laughs> we're, we're doing this <laughs> from from across the world, yeah. and the delay is definitely uh, there. Right. But because for us, we're watching your stream basically, right, so right. there's the delay from us going to you, and then from you going back to us. So we got twice the delay essentially. <laughs> Technology. Um, yeah, and and like so, the G14 is around 20 millimeters, and then the X13, like we just said, is around uh, 15 millimeters. So that's that's a pretty big difference, like 25% yeah. slimmer. Um, and the cool thing is, you know, it's almost the same size display. It's 13.6 inches, and it's 16 by 10. So the screen surface area that you're getting is very similar to the G14, but it's way lighter, only 1.3 kilos instead of 1.6. Okay, uh, very cool. All right, and you guys are asking about price, but we're gonna get there in just a minute. First, we need to talk about the XG Mobile because this isn't, yes, this, this device does transform and have these four different modes, but it goes beyond that because it comes with an external eGPU, which uh, effectively, or you can, you can have this turn the device into a desktop. So you can use this as a dock to plug in um, all kinds of devices. You guys can give me the exact details. What exactly can we, do with this external eGPU? Yeah, so this XG Mobile, I, honestly, I'm super excited about this. And what you can do with this is essentially turn your X13 into a very powerful kind of almost, a, I would say almost like a desktop replacement. Yeah, yeah. Um, inside this uh, is actually the full, is 150 watt, you know, RTX 3080 GPU. And on top of that, we have a built in 280 watt adapter. So. Why is this important? Well, now you get full performance of you know a RTX 3080 <clears throat> uh, mobile GPU, and and on top of that, because the power adapter is built inside, you don't need another bulky you know heavy power adapter. This is essentially your power it's adapter, yeah. your eGPU, and yeah. an I/O hub. Yeah. And then you just bring it along with your X13 if you want to. On top of that, this is only one kilogram. So yeah. The combined weight of the X13, which is 1.3 kilograms, and this one is one kilogram, so 2.3 total. Yeah. So compared to other, you know, 15 inch or 17 inch laptops with, you know, comparable RTX GPU, those are well over, I would say 2.6, 2.7 kilograms. So yeah, three kilos or more. So I mean, we're talking, it, it is a mobile GPU in case anybody's worried about, oh, it's just a mobile GPU, but it is 150 watts. So it's the top fully maxed out uh, RTX 3080 mobile and it's 16 GB GDDR6 memory. So it is really pretty powerful. And then uh, thanks to our direct uh, PCI Express connection, we don't lose any performance as you would normally do over Thunderbolt. So it's actually pretty comparable to having a desktop uh, graphics card performance wise. That's uh, gonna be really interesting to see um, more uh, later on with the performance reviews uh, you guys will see. Um, and yeah, so just to put it into perspective, it's one kilo in weight and a 280 watt laptop adapter is 850 grams in weight. Oh. And this one has a 280 watt adapter built in. So, you, you know, it's just 150 grams more and you get a full uh, top of the line 3080 uh, plus an IO hub for just 150 grams extra. That's, you know, really impressive. Yep. So Sasha just mentioned the the adapter to plug it into the actual X13. And Ryan, you were kind of nerding out about that when I was talking to you. What exactly is different about that adapter? Yeah, so this is our, you know, this is our proprietary adapter. And I know when as soon as we anybody says proprietary, we get those, ooh. And understandably so, but there's a lot of reason, there's a big reason that we went with this PCI Express connector instead of, say, Thunderbolt which is what much traditional eGPUs use. And the main reason is the increased bandwidth. And 
Uh, you know, when you're talking about eGPUs and how they connect to, you know, your motherboard or even kind of communicate with your CPU, it's all through PCI Express. That's the native communication protocol. And so one of the, the drawbacks of using a traditional Thunderbolt solution is that when you're going from the CPU or when you're going from your PC to the Thunderbolt eGPU and back, it often has to go from PCI Express to Thunderbolt and then back to PCI Express. And that actually causes some performance loss, especially when you're playing on the main screen. And so again, this is talking about traditional eGPUs. Whereas with our solution, with the PCI Express connector, we're able to basically communicate natively with the computer and the eGPU. And so on top of the fact that we have, I believe, over 50% more performance over bandwidth, yeah, ban bandwidth over yeah. traditional eGPUs. So we get about 64, 63 uh, uh, Gbps and Thunderbolt is about 40, I believe. Wow. So that increased bandwidth allows you to, you know, really fully utilize the eGPU in here. And you're not, you know, you're not capped by any type of, you're not bottlenecked by the yeah. connector. And so that's essentially what's special about this connector. And on top of that, uh, I don't know if we can actually show it here, but uh, so this is our PCI Express connector. And this is a eight lane connector. And to the side, we actually have a dedicated USB-C connector. So can you, can you, you zoom on the XLR? Is that possible? I think yeah, you can, let's, uh, I don't know if that's going to be too tricky to do, but I'd like to see it. There we go. Oh, oh. shaky cam. <laughs> is it visible? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So this is the PCI express eight lane connector that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And over here is the USB dedicated USB C connector. So that bandwidth that I just talked about the 63 Gbps, that is dedicated just for the graphics. You nice. get another 10 Gbps just for USB connections. And that's important because this is a hub. You know, you see you have four uh, here. <laughs> you have four USB connections and basically that to me, I would count that as almost like 73, you know, Gbps of dedicated bandwidth. And yeah. That's because it. that's the thing about Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt, everything goes through the same connector. So for us, we, we made it separate. So we have eight PCI Express lanes. Thunderbolt has four. And those eight lanes we use exclusively for the GPU. So no matter what else you do, nothing slows down the GPU bandwidth. That's huge. So uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then on the top, we also have like a, yeah. Yeah, there's an SD card slot. SD uh, slot, right very here. nice. Very well hidden. Yes. <laughs> Uh, not right a lot of here. a lot of people don't even use them nowadays, but um, <laughs> they are nice. What about the uh, USB ports? There's what four, and then I think I saw a Display Port, HDMI, Ethernet, and power. Cool. Yep. So basically, this is a full range of uh, you know this is a full range of ports, and it's a desktop. But that you point. can still use the ports as well on the X13. So mm -hmm. we have yeah, I believe we have one USB connector on the right side. We have a USB C plug. Oh, wait, on... we zoomed in. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay so again you can see the thickness difference size difference as well yep. um and yeah so you can see on the right side of the extra teen you got the sso fingerprint power button uh and you got a full size usb a and then a usb c and on the other side you have the ego connector yep so we actually have a little cover on here but when you take this cover off you can see can you see see it's kind of hard to tell yeah yeah okay me... there we go that's where yep. it plugs in yeah so that is the that is the actual connector the actually mobile connect uh let's yep. see if we can get this in here. yeah we can okay. see it and then hdmi is right here and then you have the headphone jack right here so one of the cool things about this though is that even if you don't buy the xg mobile egpu you can still use the usb-c input right here there's oh, a nice. usb-c right here for charging so, or data you can use it for both okay. at the same time yes yeah Ooh. yeah so essentially you have two usb-c ports on this a usb-a port on the right side hdmi port on the left and a headphone jack here and i believe i i talked with product marketing the other day uh i think for people especially who may not just buy the extreme mobile and they just want to use it as an ultra portable i believe this uh, little cover is going to be bundled with it and mm -hmm. so you know you can just keep it covered if you yeah, yeah it looks nice it and clean yet. No, it looks nice and clean, yeah. So there's plenty of people that want that ultra lightweight, um, small form factor device that has the performance that don't necessarily need the desktop replacement component of the XG Mobile, which is effectively what it is. Um, yeah. Cool. 
okay so i guess the next thing people want to know is numbers dollar signs what are we looking yeah. at here <laughs> So, so that's something we, we definitely need to clarify. So there was some misunderstanding about us only selling it as a bundle. So the XG Mobile together with the X13. So we do sell it as a bundle, but we also sell it separately. And that's very important because the X13 is actually priced pretty well. And I think a lot of people, like Ryan said, will be interested in using just the X13 as an ultra uh, portable laptop, and then maybe upgrade to the X2 Mobile later on. And uh, we have two versions of that one as well, 3080 and a 3070 option. And yeah, you're, you're, you're going through the product page there, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm just scrolling through. Uh, uh, I don't know if the price estimates, points right? are here anywhere. Yeah. Um, so we can talk about the, the rough estimate. Yeah. You know, the prices vary <laughs> by region and, uh, you know, different country. Yeah, so for the X13, the MSRP in US dollars, I believe, is 1200-ish or just for the X13. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and that's a really good price that's, that's if you think about price. it. 1200 bucks, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Considering what you're getting with the AMD Ryzen CPU yeah. and, and it has a camera on it. A lot of laptops nowadays don't <laughs> have that, and that's something that we haven't pointed out. It does have a webcam. Yep. So for video calls, uh, that's really cool. Yeah. And the keyboard is amazing. So anybody who cares about keyboards and wants an ultra portable, I, I'm pretty sure, very sure, there's there's no other laptop 13 inch that has a remotely as nice feeling keyboard as this one. You, you, you really got to try this. To, yeah. Like you really got to type on this to feel it because the feedback, like the way it, it, it feels and the way you type on it, it's not, you wouldn't expect this out of a third, like a laptop of this size. You'd yeah. expect something with, you know, less travel distance, but this is eerily reminiscent of the G14 keyboard. Yep. It's, it's almost the same keyboard as we had on the G14. And on the mm. G14, people already told us, wow, that's a really good keyboard for a 14 inch. And now we got the same on the 13 inch. So, uh, yeah, I think keyboard wise also, that's really interesting. So yeah, you got a really powerful CPU, really good battery life. Uh, 16 by 10 display. Uh, we got a full HD option and a UHD option as well for display. Both are touch, mm -hmm. um, MPP 2.0, so pen support like our Asus pen. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really versatile device, like Ryan said. Really powerful CPU, long battery life. 1650 is no slouch either. Um, and uh, yeah, you got you got a super light laptop with really good keyboard i think that's super appealing to a lot of different people you know for different kinds of uh things that they want to do with their laptop hey this little um <laughs> rg logo on the outside does that <laughs> light up it, or is that just the product shot uh that's a reflection on okay. the product shot yeah. okay so it's it's a it's a glossy uh piece it looks pretty cool it does and look, uh yeah. yeah it looks nice but i, I wanted to verify there's also because... a special edition so there is a special edition that Sasha said. So this is what I have right here is the, you know, it's the normal edition, you know, the peasant. I'm kidding. It's just, it's just <laughs> the edition. peasant uh, edition. <laughs> the peasant edition. <laughs> Only cost home money. I'm kidding. Yeah. So this one, this one is the regular edition that, you know, most people will buy. It's the 5900. It comes with the 5900 HS uh, CPU. Right. There is a special edition that we call the supernova edition. And the way you'll be able to distinguish immediately is if you look at this uh, part right here, it'll be like a purple hue and it's very yeah. noticeably purple. And, and that's like a very exclusive, super limited edition that comes with a 5980 HS. So it has, mm -hmm. I think, 100 megahertz higher uh, boost clocks. That Correct. must be the one that so, I saw on the image because it had a purple hue on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. That was yeah. probably it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. Uh, actually, I don't think we talked about the XG Mobile. Do we the the pricing, or should we? No, we have not uh, yet. No, I think we we did not. Yeah, we should. Okay. We should. So, so, so the bundle, two variants, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. So that's what definitely, like as Sasha mentioned earlier, we definitely uh, want to clarify and emphasize, like, you know, you can buy the X13 separately, and there are options with the XG Mobile. Uh, so you can get it with either the 3080 or the 3070, and. I think a good description of the pricing was that this is essentially like, you know, if you wanted to get the 3080, it is going to be another, you know, 1300. Yeah, it's a, it's a jump. So. I mean, yeah, it's a jump. But when you combine the price, I think that's, you know, compared to other laptops that have a 3080 with that type of CPU, with that type of performance, um, it's actually pretty par for the course. Yeah, and, and again, we, we need to like, it's 150 watts. So, yes. you know, if you, there are other laptops with a 3080 that are, you know, maybe not 150 watts. Like 115, mm. yeah. 
yeah 115 or, or even less yeah. so uh the, the the laptops that you usually find that have the full power rtx 3080 or top of the line gpu with the highest wattage those are your desktop replacement laptops so we're talking about you know like 30 millimeter 25 millimeter even 40 millimeter and they're like three kilos four kilos so then compared to that you're getting that kind of level performance at yeah. 2.3 kilos and at uh, around 2500 3000 uh, price point yeah, yeah. Hmm. but you know let's say that is a little too far in range the 3070 is cheaper and off the top of my head i believe it's around from what i talked with spms it's about eight to nine hundred ish or so mm -hmm. so you know to get a 3070 with the system you know it i think you know me being just i'm not trying to be biased but like i think to me like that's a pretty good value mm. in terms of the performance that you can get versus you know other laptops that you know would well, have a 3070 built in it's and, also like yeah. really interesting unique tech because you're getting something that's super portable and lightweight because i used to have an actual desktop replacement i bring this up on the show all the time and i traveled with that thing i brought it everywhere i went and it was a backbreaker at the airport things slayed me <laughs> and to have something like this that i could pull out on the airplane and then have the xg mobile checked in my luggage to to, you know then be able to do my video editing when i get to the convention or whatever you know just because as i'm traveling and doing events that's really great also i'm looking at this you know i'm just excited because one of these days i will get my hands on it it, it sounds really fun because the fact that the xj mobile will allow you to plug in two two displays theoretically you could have three displays total plugged in you guys said if you want to do hdmi into the x13 and then four, four? oh because the usb four. type c yeah. Yes. So yeah. you, you can have the built-in panel <laughs> plus four external monitors, so that's, total five. Okay, that's... It's a battle <laughs> it's, it's a bit much, yeah. but awesome yeah. that you can do that. But even just for me, the, the idea of having the, the X13 um, as basically a small touchscreen below my main display, and that's my desktop, right? Everything's plugged into that. We got, you know, five USB ports to play with, uh, I guess six theoretically. Um, that's really nice. There's a lot you can do with that. There's a lot of power and performance. Um, but when I'm thinking about that, that use case, I'm thinking about people like artists and creators that might be interested in this. Can I use any kind of, uh, like Wacom pen or anything like that with this touchscreen? Uh, can it be used as a drawing tablet? Like what is the potential there? Do you guys know? Yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can, you can, you can use it. So, it, like I said, it's uh, it's a touch display, both the 4K panel and the full HD panel, um, and they support MPP 2.0. So that's Microsoft Pen Protocol. That's kind of like the Windows standard for uh, for pens, essentially. Um, nice. So any Windows pen, any pen made for Windows device should work if it's MPP 2.0. Nice. There's also older versions like 1.3, 1.4, I think. Uh, those should also work, but uh, I think it's not guaranteed. It depends uh, on the pen. So you can use those kind of pens on there. And uh, yeah, like you said, you know, you can fold it to to uh, uh, into tablet mode and you can have that like a tablet with a pen mm -hmm. and then have it docked to the xg mobile and have four other external monitors at the same time so it, it would also yeah. function um intent mode i would think right if i have an intent mode i could just kind of yeah basically treat it like a tablet <laughs> um, sorry we got the slightly shaky uh, uh, c-stand okay. for for our dslr <laughs> we we hope we hope it doesn't drop on us that would be <laughs> uh bad <clears throat> Um, does Asus yeah. have a portable monitor to go along with it? We actually have at least two current portable yeah. displays running. In, uh, right. We have a ProArt, which is uh, high-end for artists, and we also have uh, a gaming portable monitor, right? Right. The gaming one, uh, I think, is 17-inch, uh, and we launched at, I think it's 240 hertz or 300 hertz, uh, like a really high refresh rate, and with a built-in battery, from what I recall. Yes, it is. And, uh, yeah. And we, we just launched a, a pro art uh, uh, external monitor that I think is really interesting. That one doesn't have a built-in battery, but it's thinner and lighter as a result. And it has a wheel on the side. That's pretty cool. Um, and uh, it has a Delta E, I think, below two. So it's a really good, uh, good. Uh, monitor. Like if you, you know go out and about and you need to have something really color accurate for video shooting, photo shooting, or something like that, or, or just editing on the yeah go. as a creator i'm really excited about like that device and also the fact that we now yeah. 
with the Zephyrus Duo, the ScreenPad Plus has a lot of functionality built with Adobe tools, a lot of built-in functionality. But we'll talk about that in a different show. Let's get, let's get back to the X13 mobile because there's there's yep. a lot of new stuff to talk about. So we've gone through the pricing roughly. Do you, you said it's about 3000 for the, the, the top end, the, the 3080, right? 1300 Bundle, for the, together, for, yeah. yeah, for everything. 1300 for the just the the standard X13 and probably I think you said like 20 or like maybe like 1800 what would you say for with the 37 2500 I, I think if it's the uh, 3070 with the 3070 and with the bundle I, yeah, yeah it's about 20 about 20 Five-ish. Okay. Again, this yeah. this will be the this will change right the region. roughly. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah, yeah. just a rough idea. This is a rough idea. Yeah. Cool. Um. So let's let's talk about making the super small factor device. We saw the comparison with the um the G14. G14. Yep. And we got to see how small this is. And we actually had Sasha brought the thermal module onto a show as a teaser when we were talking about. Um, right. Our upgrades to laptop cooling going into the new devices. This was a few weeks back before CES. You showed us that super tiny thermal module. Um, do you have it? Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah. And that thing there is, it is tiny. Yeah. And super light as well. Um, it gets really, really light. I, I wonder how much it is. Actually, I should check. We, we have a kitchen scale. <laughs> so <laughs> I brought a kitchen scale from home to check. Um, I would guess this is around 50 grams or something. It's it's crazy light. Uh, yeah. And there you can see uh, it is silver on the CPU cold plate. And for those of you who've paid attention to some of the previous episodes, that means, yes, there's liquid metal on the CPU on the X13. Uh, so that's nickel plating there to make sure that liquid metal doesn't interact with the copper of the heat sink and the heat pipes. Yeah. Finally, and our yeah, AMD it's, CPUs it's are getting... Slim. Getting that liquid metal treatment. Yeah. For the best possible performance. It really does give a very nice boost. So yeah. with liquid metal, on average, you're getting like 10 degrees lower temperatures. And in some scenarios, up to 16 degrees lower CPU temperatures, depending you know, if you're running in performance mode, turbo mode, if you're running scene adventure, playing games. That those are very different load scenarios for the right. thermal module. And... Uh, very different scenarios for the CPU then, you know, if you got one core active or all of them and how heavy they are, how heavy the loading is. Ryan is very yeah, concerned and, uh, about this camera. He's like, please don't fall, please don't fall. I just see him continue <laughs> yeah. to look at it. It's weird because we're not touching the camera, but I it know. starts shaking. I'm like, and I'm not sure why. Like maybe we're <laughs> I think kicking I know, it under I think the I table. Know why. And... I think it's this. Oh, okay. But... Yeah. We got yeah. the capture card. Uh, hanging off of uh, oh, something oh, that's nice. connected to all our right, table. All right. Well, let's just <laughs> let's not touch it and and oh, not, not oh, break oh, anything. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, let's just it's leave all it. going to break. Okay. All right, so that's a, that's a G14 thermal module, I assume? Off to uh, the sides? Yeah, so so this is the X13, and then right next to it, I got the G14 thermal module. And you can see that's uh, quite, quite a difference in size and in thickness and in weight. And that's what allows us to go up to an RTX 2060 and then 3060 for the 2021 version of the G14. So you can see uh, there's quite a difference uh, when it comes to you know the cooling potential and then the power potential you can have in the devices. So right. um, there were some people asking why uh, you know it would be cool to have a 3060 in here or something. And yeah, we, we totally agree. That would be really cool. But for that, you need at least 80 watts uh, of, of thermal design power yeah. uh, so it's good, for the a GPU. Lot bigger. Okay. It's a lot bigger. Uh, so the 1650 in here, it's only 35 watts. So it's less than half the power of uh, you know it, the GPU, like a 3060 that you would want in the in the G, G14 that we have in the G14. So mm. if we wanted to put that into the X13, that's more than double the power. It's oh, it's only forty watts, but that is really a lot. And uh, if you wanted that in the X13, uh, it would probably make the X13 at least five millimeters thicker, probably more, wow. because so the G14 is twenty millimeters, and this one is fifteen, right? Um, if you want this kind of cooling potential, some are in thirteen inch. You need to increase the thickness, and because the overall, you saw it's it's not as wide, right? The X13 is a much more compact design. So since you have smaller X and Y dimensions, you then have to increase the Z dimension, the thickness even more. Um, so it would probably have to be around 22 millimeters to be able to really properly cool a 3060. 
um, or, or a similar GPU like that. Um, even a 1660 Ti uses much more power than a 1650. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, an X13 at 22 millimeters and the weight would go up quite a bit. That would be a totally different thing. We wanted this to be super portable. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need to dissipate that extra yeah. TDP. So right. every, every, every wattage is a lot. It adds up quick. Some people are like it's only it's only forty, but that that is a that's a significant yeah. amount. Yeah, to, that's that's a lot of what. Successfully watch. dissipate that. There's there's yeah. less surface cool. area to play with here too, so that exactly. that adds up. Yeah, forty watts extra. That's essentially like having another CPU in the laptop. Yeah, you know, yeah. just to put it into perspective, or a second GPU. It's like instead of one sixteen fifty, you have two sixteen fifties, and you can imagine that it's not just oh you just add one more heat pipe or something. No, you really have to do a lot of changes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so just kind of on the, the cooling train, Ryan, earlier you were, you had an intent mode and you mentioned that this is something that the, the team gets really excited about just because I assume yeah. the ventilation is superior in that mode. Yeah, so the backstory on this actually goes back to the mothership. And, um, you know, basically what we... The mothership was kind of a... I would consider it more of like a test project. And to it was see, a like, really cool device. Capable. It was. Yeah. And... Essentially, if for people who don't know the mothership, I mean, I, I imagine nobody or any, anyone watching this has a mothership. Like, wow, it, it, to you. It, <laughs> it, it was it was essentially like a surface kind of device on steroids. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it was crazy uh, powerful. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, the mothership is uh, there's a stand on the back of the mothership, and it essentially allows you to prop the laptop up and think of it like it kind of it would kind of look like this but essentially you have your big screen and then there's a little uh stand on the back that props the mothership forward so that it the back part of the laptop is not touching the ground at all so essentially this allows cooling to come in through the back more air ha yeah essentially more air and that's kind of an, an overall theme that we have on a lot of our laptops you know you see with that duo yep. aes plus uh we want cool air essentially to go into the laptop and so essentially in tent mode, uh, I don't know if we have the full numbers. I actually don't have it off. The top Seven of or eight degrees Seven on eight CPU degrees. and GPU. Okay. Yeah, but wow. again, depending on the scenario, I think it can be up to 10 degrees. Yep. Uh, up to 10 degrees lower temperature for CPU and GPU it's in massive. tent mode. Just because, you know, the laptop is not sitting on the table. So you don't have to, you know, if it's sitting on the table, you essentially have to suck the air uh, through the, right. through the that sides. gap between yeah. the table and the laptop and then inside of the laptop. Yeah, and then the table gets hot. Yeah, and, and through the keyboard. We suck a lot of air through the keyboard yep. as well. Yeah, but, you know, hmm. when you lift it up, obviously, yeah. much easier to to pull the air in. Correct. So, I mean, it, it's like, you know, when people buy laptop stands and you you want to elevate yep. your laptop. Same, well, this same takes idea. It even further. Yeah, it's the same idea. It takes a little bit further. And essentially, you know, especially when you have the XG Mobile connected and you're at home, mm. you can have your you can have your uh, your X13 in this configuration. Mm -hmm. You can still actually use it because the screen, like, you know, it will auto-rotate. So yeah. you can right. have it as, as this. You could have your keyboard, your mouse. Yep. your monitor connected and essentially you have a dual monitor set up already yeah like this with improved cooling and so. if you use a gamepad you know you can sit right in front of the monitor which yep. you probably shouldn't do because it's not good for your eyes for extended <laughs> periods of time but you know you can you, yeah. you can sit really close to the monitor because there's nothing between you and the monitor anymore so it's you, you can just have your keyboard right here an external keyboard, you know, so external should, mouse. Is is that why my eyes are so bad? My monitor is like a foot from my face. It's like way up there. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm sure it doesn't help your eyes. And also, <laughs> you know, you being a video kind of guy, you know, uh, you're probably doing that like from the moment you wake up until yeah. at night when you go to sleep. You probably just switch between different monitors throughout I, the day. I would trust Sasha. I mean, you're basically ancient and your eyesight is really good. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. I remember uh, 10 years ago, I did like a like a health exam and they checked my eyes and they were like, oh, how old are you? Around 30? Okay, yeah, your eyes uh, are around the, the age of a 40 something year old. It was like, oof. I was like, why? Like, do you work uh, on the in front of a computer for a long time during the day? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's game like, yeah, over, that's, boys. That's we're, all, we're all doomed. 
<laughs> no, it's really like when I was younger, I didn't really pay attention to it. You're like, yeah, yeah, it's bad for your eyes, you know, like watching TV too close to the TV, playing games close to the monitor, like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But I didn't notice it. But mm. it really catches up with you. When you get older, like uh, 30 something, 40, uh, you start to see the impact you and the feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we, we've got to listen up kids <laughs> <laughs> don't sit too close to front of the monitor <laughs> a, a question yeah. we can inject here from chat asking about vr performance how is using, chat yes using the <laughs> eGPU have you guys yeah i using mean the could, could we expect like the same kind of vr performance with a 3080 on any other laptop as with this laptop and have you got sorry could you could you yeah, vr could you vr vr that? performance with the eGPU vr yeah oh virtual yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh. It, it it should be uh absolutely just like on any other uh laptop or desktop with a 3080 or that kind of level of graphics performance yeah, yeah. because um so we're using pci express so when you plug in the eGPU oh. to the laptop it's from correct. the gpu's perspective and cpu's perspective they can't tell the difference between this being a, in a PC or inside of the laptop. It's exactly how you connect the CPU and the GPU in any other laptop where the GPU is inside of the laptop or like a desktop PC where you install a graphics card. It's exactly like that. So PCI Express CPU directly to PCI Express GPU. There's nothing in between that adds extra delay uh, that you have with Thunderbolt. So a lot of Thunderbolt laptops, you have the CPU connected to the chipset from the chipset right. to Thunderbolt, and then from the Thunderbolt controller to another Thunderbolt controller, it's and latency. from that Thunderbolt yeah, controller yeah. to the GPU. Jeez. So <laughs> there's several uh. stops in between that adds extra latency as well. So yeah. you know now people care a lot about latency. You have all this uh, reflex stuff, NVIDIA reflex. So I was yeah. talking to someone That's actually recently. actually really cool. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. I was just going to say, I was talking to someone recently about, I, mean, I used to be a competitive gamer and like, I think about latency a lot in every aspect, right? And the yep. Nintendo Switch has so much built-in latency for people that compete yeah. on that console. Yeah, yeah. You've got the device that plugs into the dock and then you've got a USB thing going out to the GameCube adapter. So for Smash Brothers, the default latency on that game is really bad. Um, so it's mm, just, you yeah. know, you think about any kind of connector, you think about any piece you assume maybe there's latency and that's really cool that we found mm. a solution for yeah. the XG mobile to make it direct and bring zero latency into the experience. That's great to hear. Yep. Yep. So yeah, um, intent mode, then, uh, you get much more performance, uh, not, not much more performance, but you get much better temperatures that also translates into performance. So you're getting slightly better performance, but mostly, um, lower temperatures and lower fan noise. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can put the keyboard and the mouse right in front of it and move it around and have it in any orientation as you want, just like on the mothership. So that was yep. one of the big things for mothership where you can prop it up. You have the display and on mothership, you could detach the keyboard module, right? And then you could put it anywhere you want uh in front of it to feel much more like a desktop pc um so yeah this is kind of uh similar in that regard so um yeah it's it's kind of taking some of the dna from the mothership originally and yeah uh people are probably wondering about like noise and temperatures and that kind of stuff we can't yep. talk uh about the actual temperature data and performance data and all that stuff but noise we can talk about we can tell you we have uh, silent mode, we have performance mode and turbo mode. So you can choose, uh, we basically let you choose. Uh, everybody has a different preference, you know, for how much am I willing to uh, compromise on temperatures for the components, surface temperatures, and also for noise to get what kind of level of performance. And so we got those three different modes that let you choose. Silent mode is 35 decibels or even quieter. Uh, performance mode is around 40, 45, and then turbo mode is around 45, a little bit higher than that. And you can do the same thing for the XG Mobile. So even when you plug into the XG Mobile, there were some people curious about this. I heard um, over the last couple of days, um, what about the fan noise of the XG Mobile then? Same thing there. We have different operating modes, so you can choose. Do you want the XG Mobile to give you all the performance it possibly can, or do you want it to be, you know, quiet? Because you can imagine, even if you run the <laughs> RTX 3080 in quiet mode, that's still a lot of performance. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, besides that, uh, we also have um, some accessory that comes with the X13 and the X2 Mobile. 
and uh, this is not, uh, it doesn't always come with it. It depends on the country where you're buying it and like maybe which shop you're buying it at. But uh, we have those really cool sleeves um, that are super compact and lightweight. Yeah, so uh, this is the GV, uh, it's the X13 sleeve. And this on top right here, this little pouch is actually for the XG Mobile. And you would put Makes the sense. X13 right in there over here. Yeah. So it's a very compact solution and very lightweight. Very lightweight. And you can actually detach the, the front pouch here. So, you know, sometimes you don't you don't need to bring the XG mobile. That is you. good. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it becomes even more slimmer, even more lightweight. Yeah. And I really like this uh, XG mobile pouch because um when so I'm actually using this, I've been using this for the last few weeks with my G14. So my work laptop is a G14, and I've been using it for that. Um, and the cool thing, so this is semi-transparent. I don't know, yeah, you can see it. Um, <laughs> it's pretty cool because you can see what's in there. Like, uh, <laughs> so you, you know if you got your power adapter with you or not. So for mm. me, I kept this attached. Uh, I'm using it for my G14. My G14 fits in here, pretty nice. It's a little bit uh, snuggly fit, but it does fit. And then in here, I have my USB Type-C charger and I have my mouse and uh, some other accessory like USB, uh, SSD, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that's really cool. You have like your accessory in here and you have the laptop in the main bag. So, and this is so small and, and light. Uh, this is really cool. And you got everything you need right with you. And I like the design as well. It looks, looks really nice. I know I want an XG Mobile and an X13 as my work laptop. Yeah, I'm I'm really uh, interested <laughs> in seeing what you can do with it. You know, because when we create, when our product marketing team creates uh, uh, marketing material, or when we work on the review guides, yeah. we always try to think of different scenarios. How are people going to use it, and what's what's a scenario that everybody goes like, oh yeah, that is really compelling. That's interesting. You know, uh, this product really makes sense for this kind of use. Um, and I think I'm really looking forward to like see what you do with it and what other creators and other uh, you know power users do with it. That's always really nice to see what kind of setup people then come up with. Yeah. Um, really looking forward to, it. especially you. Like you work with a lot of monitors, you have some powerful systems as well, and you need that uh, performance as well. So right. really. Yeah, and like you said, that was a really interesting idea using it the, in in tablet mode with a pen, and then having the other monitors connected. That yeah, I would I would really like to actually see that kind of setup. I think I want to use it in tent mode, put it directly beneath my primary display, and then have it connected to my. I have a you know a standard horizontal display, and then I have a vertical display to the left yeah. for all my streaming tools. By by bringing that third display in, I was thinking of building maybe a custom HTML dashboard. Um, to control the whole stream and be able to change scenes and do all that and basically be able to monitor everything on that display. I think it'd be really cool because, um, well, you know, I, I nerd out about streaming production stuff, obviously, because that's what I'm into. But I think that I think this could be a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, one of these days we'll be doing some live streams with with one once once we can get. Yeah, our hands we, on we definitely sample. have to do like. We have to do an episode where you walk us through your setup because even us, we haven't seen your whole setup, right? Well, so I think that we're going really cool to wait to see... because I'm building like a whole <laughs> new like home streaming studio that's going to be much shinier. So we'll, we'll do it once that happens because I'm actually going to document the whole process of building the custom desks I'm doing. Um, I'm doing RGB on everything. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll make sure to make because some, you need some... the best performance, of exactly. course. Yeah, RGB. I mean, to be RGB, how am I gonna yeah. get that three hundred and sixty hertz? You know, frames, the three hundred sixty FPS. How am I gonna get that without RGB? You just can't. without RGB. Yeah, yeah. 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 You you can't exactly. No, but I think honestly, you, you should still take some footage, like video or pictures of your current setup, to have like the before and after. That always makes it a lot more, you know, this interesting. Room, this room sounds is like just a, so, uh, so should, dinky. Sounds like business trip to Jake's house. <laughs> oh no. No, 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 no. I, no, Jake, Jake can do that oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. by himself. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. It's not that I don't want to come and visit no, you. But Ryan, Ryan's like, just trying uh, to find an excuse like to, to visit his family because I'm not too far from where you grew up. Not you oh, yeah, right. You guys are like neighbors almost. <laughs> by like five, by five hours, but yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Same region well, in, of the in U.S. In a country as big as the U.S., you right. know, five-hour drive, is, that's pretty close. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, any, any... Final thoughts we might have missed here on the X13 and the XG Mobile. I think we, I think we got it all. Yeah, I pretty think it was pretty everything. thorough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any? Or, I haven't seen any other questions yeah. in chat. I think we kind of were pretty thorough. People seem excited about the multi-display opportunities pr provided mm, yes. by this device because it is, you know, like you said, a lot of people commute to say New York City, right? 
I know a lot of people in Connecticut that take the train to work. It's an hour, hour and a half train ride. And they're either yeah. working on their device during the transit or they're, you know, reading comics or whatever, you know, whatever they can do to entertain themselves. And, you know, this is the perfect device to bring to work, you know, bring for your commute, bring on a flight and then go home, plug it in. Bam. All your files are there. Um, everything. You don't have to worry about cloud. You can work offline. You can work locally. Um, just yeah. those benefits alone, especially like if you don't want to pay for a cloud membership and you do like a lot of planning for presentations or whatever, this just seems like the perfect business and pleasure laptop, right? You can just have it for that lightweight business, but if you want to game on it, then you can have the XG Mobile. And granted, you could still game on it without the XG Mobile. The 1650 Correct. is going to let you play a decent number of games on its own. So we guess we, we need to clarify that because I don't want people to think that you cannot game on this yeah. without the XG Mobile. You absolutely can. Uh, but yeah. with a 3080, you can play anything, right? You know, you'll be playing yeah, yes. Half-Life Alex in VR, the max settings, you'll be playing... The, Cyberpunk yeah, with ray yeah. tracing maxed out experience that, that's that, something like I, yeah. I i was i actually thought was really interesting uh the person who you, asked about you actually VR. did right didn't you didn't you play cyberpunk oh yeah yeah on the X13? Actually, yeah, yeah really <laughs> but with regards to yeah. vr yeah i mean i have we have you know pre you know we have early samples of so course, of course right. I, yeah you know of course yeah, yeah. That's so a, that's one of the first things we had to check is does it run cyberpunk does it run cyberpunk so as soon with, as cyberpunk came out with max ray tracing for science yeah yeah because I, I can't even get max ray tracing um, with good performance. And I, I'm using a desktop that's not anything to slouch at. It's got a 3900 and it's got an RTX 3070. And I can get medium ray tracing and get good frames. But once I hit high ray tracing, my frames go to like well, 60 and below. Yeah. <laughs> well, right, 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 right. But that's it's just, it's impressive, right? <laughs> yeah. No, but the VR thing is actually really cool. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I know if you have a, you know, depending on what type of VR headset you have, but, you know, I know some people that, you know, you, you do use uh, PC VR or some kind of yeah. VR headset that's tethered to the desktop computer. Yep. This could actually be a pretty portable solution because sometimes yeah. you want to go to the living room because your PC might be in mm -hmm. man cave, you know, a lot of people have man caves and it might be kind of in an area where you can't move around a lot. So there's a lot of situations that you can use this for and that's really the flexibility that it brings. And it's really no slouch. It's full powered 150 watt yeah. 3080 is definitely going to be very good for a lot and, of VR. And like you said, the, the the 1650 is pretty powerful. So you can't play, you know, games at ultra, but you can play pretty much any game at full HD resolution. Yes. So um, you can play it at medium to high, depending on what kind of game you're playing. So 1650 is really impressive GPU. Yeah. Um, it's not the latest, you know, it's been on the market for about a year or so, I think. Um, it's but, still you very know, good. It's still very good. At 35 watts, like the um, the performance per watt you're getting with a 1650 is absolutely amazing. If you compare it to any other GPU, how much performance you're getting for how many watts of power, the 1650 is amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, it's been on the market for a while. There will probably be a refresh for that one. So that will be uh, interesting as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, for VR, like uh, Ryan said, you know, some people play PC VR. Um, we actually both have a Quest 2. Yes. And I'm totally sold on, on you know, standalone VR now, especially with Wi-Fi streaming over virtual desktop. Correct. You know, that's that's such a mind, uh, su such a game changer. Uh, that's really mind blowing that you're able to have a PC experience, PC VR experience on your, you know, untethered wireless headset that you're wearing and it's so comfortable. Uh, yeah, that's, but that's can really- can it and then, play Half-Life Alex? Yes, yes it can. Oh, okay. It can. And yeah, so essentially how it works is instead of having a cable connected, you, you can also do that. Officially, if you want to play on a Quest 2, you know, you need to have that uh, link cable, but you actually don't have to. You can, it's not officially supported, it's like in beta kind of unofficial situation, but you can actually connect your PC to the Quest headset over Wi-Fi. Yes. And then it's streaming everything over Wi-Fi. So you have no wire, but you're getting Huh. PC to render everything. So it looks, you can play all PC VR games. It looks amazing. It, it looks slightly worse than if you're wired and if you're actually using like a like a Valve Index or, or a G -verb, uh, Reverb, uh, G2 Reverb from HP or something like that. It does look slightly worse if you know exactly what to look for. But if you don't know what to look for, like 
I can't tell the difference. I think and, it looks great. And yeah. The the input lag is, is really good as well. Yeah, it's like 20, 30 milliseconds. So, you, you yeah, know, on top good. of everything, but still it's... We have a, uh, yeah. a, a sister podcast called SideQuest and in, in two weeks, our topic is, is VR. Um, right. so oh, now, okay. So now I'm thinking I got to do two episodes of that, one with you guys and then one with the guys here in the states because i i think they i think you got you guys seem hungry to talk about vr so maybe we'll oh yeah sure we'll like do yeah. two different episodes and mash them up or something i think that could be a cool sure. idea cool way to do it um yeah yeah we can maybe do one on like pc vr and one on quest since we both use quest 2 yeah. uh that would kind of make sense but yeah i mean the main thing about that is just like yeah i know a lot of people I, I don't know a lot of people but people that do have pc vr like you, yeah. if you have a valve index or something yeah you know, expensive you are basically tethered to your desktop but with right. this you can move it out anywhere yep. you want and yep. many times like if i were to have a pc vr like in my bedroom i can't move around freely. right yeah, yeah. I, you know i have a lot of stuff i, I specifically living room right yep. yeah my new office is going to be 13 by 13 feet which is the maximum size room <laughs> recommended for the yeah. base station Same. right so i specifically Same. like I, yeah. you know had a room built in my house for that which is yeah. excessive right but um, but I know. think a lot of people do that. I, I think a lot of people don't, you know, they're not able to re uh, allocate space in their apartment, like, or their house and like create a new room for it. But I think people do move everything around to then have space yeah. for VR. My, my friend I think it's... has to drag his PC in, into the living room because that's the only place yeah. where he can do it, right? He's got the base station hooked up in the living room and that's what he has to do. Yeah. Um, exactly like everybody i know who has pc vr they have it set up in the living room right. you know because yeah. that's the biggest room and yeah. you need as much space as yeah. possible and then what happens is you move your pc into the living room or you have it like at the doorstep <laughs> to the living room <laughs> and have long cables yeah that i think that's like a very standard thing and like 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 you said you're not gonna you can actually play on battery as well if you have like a big external battery pack as well but the key thing here is um with the xg mobile you can set this up anywhere you want so you don't have to drag a pc from one room to another yeah. or have it like in an awkward position at home but you can have the xg mobile probably in your living room so you probably have the xg mobile in your living room connected to the base stations connected to the headset and then your your extra team you have it with you when yeah. you're out and about and when yep. you come back home you plug it into the xg mobile and off you go and uh VR adventures. And then move, exactly. moving your XG Mobile to your battle station would be super easy, anyways, right? So you just yeah, go exactly. plug it into your displays. Yeah. Boom, done. That is that is yeah. a really good point. And then yeah, that's that's what's so cool about the XG Mobile. Let's say now you're visiting a friend, and uh, you know you want to play games over the weekend, so you you want as much performance as possible. You just take the XG Mobile with you. It's it's like you pull out some 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 cables, uh, and you're ready to go. And yeah. it's super light. You just throw it in a backpack. It fits into any backpack. It is super light. It's one kilo. Um, you just throw it in your backpack and uh, off you go. You can set it up at your friend's place, take it back home. You can go to a LAN party uh, once there's LAN parties again. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you can take it to the office Dude, if you house... need to work on something. Oh, I just realized I don't That's... have this turned on right now. Look at that. Uh, I can't even really see it with the lighting. Oh, yeah. oh the RGB lighting. Oh, yeah, it's oh. there. It's hard to tell when the... the, the... That's why the stream was so laggy. You <laughs> I didn't know? have the RGB. Like, we didn't have the full performance. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it beautiful, RGB though? Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. I just, it does look really nice. I, I want land, You're so happy that I, I you finally got it. I host LAN parties, <laughs> like, or I used to all the time. And, you know, every few months we'd have a big LAN party. And I, I just... I, I can't wait to show this off. Because none of my friends know that I have this RGB chair... So to just plug it in and just be like, look at this. Boom. <laughs> and and it's, it's, it's Aura Sync even, right? So you can sync it up with uh, I actually like games haven't played you're with playing? that yet. I haven't played Oh, yeah, you yet. have to. So, well, and then, then, you know, like you're playing a game and, and you get hit and then the chair is flashing in red and people go like, what? what and it rumbles. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That it would, rumbles? That, no, that would be ridiculous. That would be so distracting. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. We need the ROG haptic feedback chair. Um, maybe someday. Maybe someday. For sim racing, that yeah, it could actually be really interesting. Yeah, it could be cool. Or like uh, Hota's uh, Star Wars uh, VR flying, and then your chair is vibrating when you get shot at. That would actually be really cool. Stop getting me excited, Sasha. <laughs> Stop getting you excited. Jake's excited. Uh -oh. Well, we're getting really far off topic. Yeah. But, we, but we yeah. are. We so, are. It's, but, you know, guys, it's been a lot of fun. We've talked about the X13 and the XG Mobile thoroughly, yep. and we've got many 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 more devices to talk about in the upcoming weeks yep 
Um, the next stream will be tomorrow. I'll be playing Death Stranding again, showing off the newly launched beta of GPU Tweak 3. So GPU Tweak has been a tool that's been available for overclocking your, your uh, GPU for a long time and just tracking stats. Um, we also have a brand new on-screen display built in with it so that, you know, when I stream or when anybody streams or if you just want to know what kind of performance you're getting, you can track, you know, basically the CPU temp, the GPU temp, how much usage mm. you're getting on the GPU and the CPU, um, your current frame rate, all that information displayed in the corner or wherever you want to put it on the screen. Really nice. I'll be playing with that, <laughs> excuse me, tomorrow. And um, in the coming weeks, yeah, we got a bunch of shows. We're going to be talking about uh, our new in-house made keyboard switches that is featured on many new device new keyboards that we're releasing very soon that we showed off at ces that's going to be next week's episode of pulse then i think we're jumping into is it the the scar yeah right yeah we're doing the scar the week after scar yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. scar or the duo i i, I have to remember i don't remember I think <laughs> it, it was the scar. It was the scar on the schedule. Yeah, yeah. February, it's, so. it's probably the scar. Right? Yeah. We'll get to the duo eventually. I kind of want to have the duo hands on before we do that show personally. So we'll see. I'm, I'm like really being annoying, being like, give me it. Give you me you it, can just take your 2020 duo and paint it black and then Ooh, just do the show. Just pretend <laughs> we could pretend that it is the 2021 version. Yeah. Because I am obsessed with the duo. I, every time we talk about the duo, I get way too excited. I'm actually making a new uh, experimental project with the duo right now. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys more about that later. But guys, Ryan, Sasha, any final words? Uh, no. Yeah. I hope chat had a good time as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we do this all for you guys. So um, hope you really enjoyed this. If you have any suggestions or, you know, you want to know more or you have an idea like, hey, we should do an episode where you talk about, I don't know, this or that. Yeah. Uh, yeah let Definitely us know. Let us know in the chat. And uh we do we do read the chat so yeah and, and we comments. really appreciate really all appreciate your it. all your uh comments and feedback and questions uh you guys are the best all right guys that's gonna do it here for rog pulse we'll see you next time ggs